Columbus Public Health is reporting its first case of COVID-19 here in Columbus. In a moment, Dr. Mashika Roberts will give you the details. But first, I want to emphasize that this is not a surprise. It is not unexpected. Dr. Roberts and I, as well as Governor DeWine and Dr. Amy Acton, have been saying that it was a matter of when, not if, case would be confirmed here in Central Ohio. We expected this. And in the coming days and weeks, we will have many, many more. Our goal is to slow the spread of the infection and lessen the impact on our community. The procedures we have in place, including the local public health emergency that the Board of Health adopted yesterday, gives us the tools we need to protect our community. Now, I'd like Dr. Roberts to give you the details of the case. Dr. Roberts. Thank you, Mayor Ginther. We have been planning for this day, and now we are here. Columbus Public Health is reporting its first confirmed case of COVID-19 in a resident of Columbus. The case is a 49-year-old male who recently traveled on the Carnival cruise ship, The Valor. He departed from New Orleans and traveled to Cozumel and the Yucatan and returned to New Orleans on February 5th. He arrived back in Columbus on March I'm sorry, I need to correct those dates. On February 29th, he departed from New Orleans and traveled to Cozumel in the Yucatan, and he returned to New Orleans on March the 5th. He arrived back in Columbus on March the 6th and started having symptoms the next day. He sought medical treatment on March 11th and March 12th. He is currently at home in isolation and recuperating. Since we learned of this case last night, we have been working through the night and contacting all those who knew him or were with him over the last few days. Currently, we have two household contacts that are in quarantine, and we have two contacts who are exhibiting symptoms, who are in isolation, and are currently being tested. Additionally, if anyone in the Central Ohio area was on the Carnival cruise ship, The Valor, during that time, again, those dates are February 29th through March 5th, we are asking them to call us at 614-645-1519. Again, that number is 614-645-1519. The first case of COVID-19 in our community reminds us that we all must continue to take precautions to protect our health and stay safe in these uncertain times. This is not a hoax. This disease will affect all communities, all demographics. This virus does not discriminate against age, race, gender, nor socioeconomic status. Columbus Public Health will continue to work closely with our local, state, and federal partners and our local health systems to take all appropriate measures to prevent and contain the spread of this virus. We will continue with our contact investigation of this case to see if there are any other potential cases in our community. I want to remind everyone, if you are sick, please stay home. Please contact your health care provider to get the appropriate treatment. If you feel you have traveled to an area where the virus is endemic in the last 14 days, or you've been around someone who's been diagnosed with COVID-19 in the last 14 days, please call your health care provider. He or she will work with you to determine if you should receive COVID-19 tests or testing. Tests are available here in our community but you need to be referred by your health care provider. In addition to the restrictions set in place by the state to slow the spread of COVID-19 in our community, 
everyone can take precautions to protect health and prevent the spread of this infectious disease by following some very simple steps. Wash your hands often with soap and water. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Stay home when you are sick and cover your cough and sneezes with your elbow. This continues to be a rapidly evolving situation and we expect to see more local cases. However, we have been planning for this moment and we will continue to work together to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in our community. Columbus Public Health will continue to monitor this situation and work diligently to protect the health in our community. Mayor Gimple. City Attorney Klein, would you like to make any comments before I close this up? Thank you, Dr. Roberts, and uh, again, my deepest gratitude to you and your outstanding team for their phenomenal work over the last several weeks, and I, I know uh, for the several weeks and months to come, our public health department uh, will do everything in their power to help guide us, educate us, and protect the public. It's important to note that this case was not what is called community spread. We're able to trace where this individual likely contracted COVID-19. But we do expect cases of community spread in Columbus. That is the normal trajectory of this infection. To reinforce Dr. Roberts and Dr. Acton and so many public health leaders, I want to remind the public to practice safe hygiene. Wash your hands. Cough or sneeze into your arm not your hands. Eliminate handshaking. Practice social distancing, six feet between people. If you are sick, stay home. If you suspect you have COVID-19, if you've traveled to one of the hot spots in the country or in the world, if you've been in contact with someone with COVID-19, if you have a high fever, dry cough, shortness of breath, contact your health provider immediately. And just a couple other points I would like to make. First, people are starting to stock up on foods, and that's fine. Many people are also buying bottled water. Please know that the water in the city of Columbus, Central Ohio, is safe to drink. Bottled water is not necessary. Second, Election Day is coming up on Tuesday. I want to reinforce that it is safe to vote. You can vote at early vote centers, uh, you know, still yet today. Return absentee ballots and show up to your polling location. I do want to encourage people to double check their polling location. Our polling location changed because we had voted uh, in a retirement nursing facility and it's moved to a school. So there are a number of uh, polling locations that have changed in an, an abundance of caution of protecting our seniors in our community. But want to encourage people to get out there and vote. It is safe and critically important for folks to do that. I also want to encourage people taking those precautions, practicing good hygiene, to get out there and support local businesses in our community. This virus does not define us. We control that. We do need to take precautions, take care of ourselves, our families, our neighbors. But my wife and I are going out tonight to a local restaurant with our friends. And we're doing everything we can. And if folks don't feel comfortable going out and shopping or, or uh, going to restaurants, buy a gift certificate. But let's get our resources into our local economy to make sure that we're able to weather this storm together. Dr. Roberts and I are happy to take your questions. Dr. 
Um, thank you for the question. So individuals who have a chronic health condition, um, they should be mindful of their environment. Um, they shouldn't change their life completely. The guidance right now is they should avoid mass gatherings, but there's no guidance out there about not going to work and not doing their normal daily activities. Dr. Roberts, if residents don't have a relationship with a health care provider, where should they go? Uh, for residents who do not have a health care provider, they can call their local health department. If they live in the Columbus and Worthington jurisdiction, they can call 614-645-1519. If they are exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19, we will help to get them connected to care and get them tested. What was that number again? 614-645-1519. That currently is seven days a week, yes. What is the name of the ship again? The Valor. The Valor, V-A-L-O-R. And what was the latest condition on that patient that was confirmed? Uh, he is resting at home and recuperating. And again, just to go over the precautions, um, you said some family members were um, being monitored as well. I said two household contacts are in quarantine. And then two close contacts are in isolation, and we're awaiting their test results. We you know how to deal with other people from Columbus. Was this a part of a group that went down? So we have some preliminary information that this could have been a group of individuals who traveled together, and we're in the process of trying to contact that group and see if others um, are ill. Is the gentleman from Columbus proper or a suburb? The case that we're confirming lives within the city of Columbus. When you said the two contacts were in isolation, is that in their homes? Yes, they are both being isolated in their homes. Are you looking at other circles that this person may have uh, worked in or traveled in or you know, at a church or synagogue or anything like that? Are there any other touch points that you're looking at with this case? In this particular case, this um, individual is unemployed. So we, he was not exposed at work, and when he started getting sick was, was the day he returned from his trip. He was so sick he stayed at home. So we don't have any other exposures other than household contacts and the individual he traveled with at this point. How quickly the, was the turnaround from the time this person got tested and got the results back? So it's very quick. So he was tested March 12th, which was Thursday. I don't know the exact time. And I got the call last night at 8 p.m. that his test results were positive. His samples were tested at Ohio Department of Health lab. Where did he go to get the testing? I'm not disclosing that information. Do you know how many other people were being tested at this point? We have 54 residents of Columbus and Worthington that are currently being tested for COVID-19. Previously, every winter, people get common colds and things that kind of have similar symptoms. There's probably a lot of people scared right now because they have a cold. What do you advise them to do? Um, individuals with COVID-19 are exhibiting symptoms that are much uh, more significant than the common cold. I mean, these are individuals who just want to stay in bed. Um, they are not able to go to work and not able to function. So I think that's a differentiation that people should use. Um, most individuals with COVID-19 have a fever as well. And we're talking a pretty significant fever. And again, a fever is defined as 100.4 or higher. Um, so um, all the cases that I have seen have have had a pretty significant um, fever. So that's something that individuals should keep in mind and that can differentiate a common cold from the flu or from COVID-19. Any other questions? So there's things like uh, you hearing stories about stores not having basic things. Does anyone know if there are some supply chain, why that's happening? Is there something that's going to solve itself? Does anyone know when that's going to resolve itself? I can just tell you what I've heard on the media, and the media has said there is not a supply chain issue. It's just a lot of people buying in a short period of time, and that stores are restocking as product comes in. I think uh, to Dr. Roberts' point, it's really important. I understand the, the, the fear, uh, uh, especially dealing with a virus that is uh, so new and so much is unknown and things are evolving and changing at a very rapid pace. But it's critically important that uh, we continue to live our lives knowing that, as I've said before, disruption is the new normal uh, for the foreseeable future. 
uh, but there are resources out there. We're going to come together as a community to help weather this storm, focus on, on protecting ourselves, our families, looking out for our neighbors. But this is not a time to panic. We have public health professionals that are helping to lead us through this. Uh, we are going to have to make additional sacrifices, uh, all of us. Uh, but we are going to come out of this crisis uh, stronger as a community uh, if we continue to focus on the common good uh, and looking out for one another. Yesterday, the president talked about Walmart's being a place that people are going to drive through. Is that something that's happening here in our area? Does anyone know they're going to be driving through testing facilities? So um, we do have capacity in our um, community for testing for COVID-19. I've shared that with you before. Again, individuals need to go through their health care provider in order to get screened and identified for that testing. Uh, we will have a variety of different options for our community. Some could be drive-in and some could be within an office. So um, that will be available. And in some cases, it already is available in our community. Is that something that we'll see happening within uh, there is no f time frame, but I can tell you that we are working on it. It could be launched as soon as 48 hours, depending on the need in our community. The president held out hope yesterday of a Google uh, page that would help people in this process. Do you see much hope in that? I think that could be beneficial. Um, I, I heard a little bit about it, so um, I don't know. I mean, it's important that we we recognize we're at this point we're trying to test people who are symptomatic and so making sure we have the capacity to test those who are symptomatic is the first thing we need to do as a nation do these individuals have any pre-existing conditions not that i'm aware of is there any information about when you do test what percentage of them are negative and what percentage of them are positive uh, as far as the people are exhibiting symptoms and it turns out it's not the I haven't seen that data at this point. Is there any sense of when there might be a, a peak season of this? You know, it's just starting to be mm -hmm. so so, you know, that's what's the mystery around this disease, and that's what concerns us as public health providers and as clinicians, is there's so much unknown about this disease. We don't know if this is the peak or if the peak is yet to come. When the news of this virus first at the break, we were told that it tended to affect elderly people and people with compromised systems. Yet most of the Ohio cases have been people in their 50s or 40s, many of whom have no underlying conditions. Are we revising now who the demographic affected is? I think the demographics of our cases in Ohio really illustrate that there's so much we don't know about this disease. I mean, we think it's over 60 who are at greatest risk. Likely they are at greatest risk of complications. We know that those with chronic health conditions are at greatest risk, again, of complications. And those with weakened immune systems are at greatest risk of complications. Um, but as we look at the data right here in Ohio, in our case right here, um, it does not appear that they fall in any of those categories but they're still um, very symptomatic and positive test results. So we're learning. We're learning about the risk factors of this virus as we go. Dr. Roberts, can people without health insurance call the number that you mentioned previously and access care? Yes, you do not have to have health insurance in order to get tested for COVID-19. That is not a barrier. Health insurance or not having it is not a barrier. So you're not charging them? They are not being charged for COVID-19 testing. What's the number again? 645-1519.